online support group. This is an online service of outreach and support offered by the Parkinson Society of Maritime Region of Atlantic Canada. I'm your co-host Peter Davison, diagnosed at age 45 in 2005. I'm joined by co-host Natasha McCarthy, diagnosed last year at age 39. Tonight's topic, the role of creative expression in, in Living Well with PD. And our guest speaker is Janice Horn, artist, person with Parkinson's, and a DBS recipient. I just want to share how I was inspired to uh, contact Janice and find out more about art as a creative expression. The piece that's on the screen here was done by my friend Sherry, who I believe has been diagnosed for about 10 years now. And just last year, she picked up the brush and started making art. It's certainly very beautiful, and we were very happy to, to win it in the raffle at the recent uh, Practice Maritimes annual conference. It just speaks to the whole idea of creativity and self-expression and the joy of uh, making something outside of yourself. The, the, this slide is a postcard that was actually handed to me uh, at the end of a speech I gave in, in Western Canada at the Parkinson's uh, Society chapter there. The guy handed me this postcard and it was just a crowd of people around me. And I, I emailed him back later and I said, uh, John, uh, thank you for your postcard. It's a stunning photograph. I assume you took that yourself. He, 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 he yes, there you go. He, he, he <laughs> I got an email back. <laughs> And he said, you know, Pete, it's important to have something beautiful in the foreground of your life every day. Parkinson's will be with us. It's going to be in the background, but it's important to have something beautiful in the foreground, whether that's something beautiful you look forward to getting up every day, whether that's creating art or cooking or crafts or family time, grandchildren time, kid time, whatever that looks like, it's important to have something more beautiful in the foreground than, than, than Parkinson's. Acknowledging the Parkinson's will always be part of our life but to be part of uh, something bigger than that and looking forward to getting up in the morning to create art like this or to hang, play with children or whatever that creative expression looks like. Put that in the foreground of your life and enjoy living a life fully by having beautiful things to wake up to every day. So the whole idea of creating art today and hearing Janice's story is all about this idea of putting something beautiful in the foreground. Here's my daughter, six-year-old daughter's uh, creative expression. One of the things I think is beautiful is that once you um, open up your creative expression, it inspires others. And of course, kids don't need any, any inspiration to, to draw. But here she is drawing the, the Parkinson's Tillis for me. And I took one of his pictures and hung it on the lectern at the World Congress, the Parkinson's in Montreal in 2013. And it was very inspiring for the folks because I said I wanted to start with this picture because I was going to do that. So Janice, creativity in Parkinson's disease. I first met Janice when I spoke in Winnipeg a couple of years back. She's part of the Young Onsite group there, and it was a wonderful opportunity to, to share with her. And uh, this uh, seat put set some seeds for the Young Onsite Parkinson's group. And uh, she, she's run a, a wonderful um, uh, art show at the last um, Parkinson's meeting in Winnipeg. So I want to pass it over to her to share what this whole world is like and uh, the, the invitation to create and the invitation to be beautiful and have something beautiful in the foreground. Janice, over to you. Okay, you can you can go to the next slide. That's just a, sort of a title one. Okay. And thank you very much for having me. Um, the reason I agreed is because I really think the more you can do when you have Parkinson's that helps you, the better you are, obviously. And I think this is a, you know, unless you're somebody that's been created before, a lot of people don't even think to try it. But what I found is that talking to other people is that many people find this extremely helpful in dealing with symptoms and other things. Now, just in general, um, creativity, it makes you happier. It just makes you feel better. And this doesn't have to be something you do yourself, just going to a museum or going to an art gallery or anything like that, reading a book, you know, those sorts of things are all going to help enhance your mood. It reduces stress, depression, all those things that are affecting Parkinson's all the time, but in just in the general public as well. It helps you understand yourself better, it helps you understand others better, and it can alter how you think. And this I can I can say for myself recently because we did do this art show and I did I did a piece specifically for it that took me three months to do. Before I started the project, I was I was feeling kind of depressed, you know, and I, and I have had trouble with that since my diagnosis. And even before my diagnosis, I've had periods of depression. And what I found was as I was doing this project, I was I was feeling better and better and better all the time. 
and in fact finding you know a lot of it was helping me actually do other things as well because it was taking me out of my funk as i call it and so you know just and i hadn't done any art for a while because i was depressed and so you know just to force yourself to do something is amazing what it can do for you that three months really showed me how much i needed to do this all the time as part of my day you know next slide go to the next one peter yeah is it working okay. yeah how's that is that it yeah that's it this is a piece i did right after i was diagnosed i was on mirapex and as it turns out mirapex actually makes you more creative <laughs> people start taking it and they um they become writers or and they've never drawn before they become painters it's amazing not that 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 should make you go on it or anything but um this is something i drew just real quick one night because i was feeling really upset after i got diagnosed i went through three years of quite a bit of depression and so i just drew this and i felt better afterwards so it's awesome. It's, you know, it was a quick drawing and my husband says he wants to get it tattooed on him. I said, ew, yuck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to look at that ever again. But anyways, that was, yeah, that was my way of dealing with some of the, the trauma. And it was amazing actually how much better I felt after. So, you know, as it says there, when it's about something traumatic or emotional, you can actually enhance your physical and psychological effects. Next slide. Now, specifically for creative youth Parkinson's disease, as I was saying, mirror packs and some other medications can actually enhance or introduce creativity. Um, I know quite a few people actually who it has helped them. Another thing I've noticed during my three month project was that I didn't notice my symptoms or they weren't there. I don't even know because. I, I didn't feel them and I honestly think some of them weren't there because I would go an hour past taking my medication I still wouldn't have, you know I didn't realize I was you know I wasn't feeling the effects of Parkinson's quite the same way so that was exciting and it does help to alleviate the burden of it I find you can go to the next slide as we were talking about before I wake up in the morning the first thing that hits me is Parkinson's you know it's always in, it seems to be in the foreground all the time and because I, I can barely get out of bed I can't you know my rope I mean I try and roll out of bed and I have to pull on the blankets to get myself up and so it's on my, my mind from the time I get up until I go to bed you can go to the next slide it's the same one just a different thing and so when I create something it actually goes away I don't think about Parkinson's I don't think about having it and I get a mental break from it, which I find I really need. Because when you think about it all the time, you get upset, you know, and you start to feel sad and depressed and all those things. And I, I find this really helps my, me feel more happy, just in general. So you can go to the next one. Now this was our art show that we did. And this is just a little thing that I wrote about why I did it. And it was for we had a reporter here who wrote a story about, it was actually about a fight that had taken place here and a young guy had been knocked out and put into a coma. And she started talking about Muhammad Ali. And she said that he was a trembling shell because of his fighting. And her and I had this bit of an interaction where I was saying, that, you know, he has Parkinson's, that's not, that's not his, his um, boxing necessarily. They don't really know why. And it really bothered me that she referred to him as a trembling shell. And so I tried to think of ways to, that we could show people that that's not how it is, you know, that we aren't just, we may not be able to express ourselves as, as everybody else, but we are still there. And so I ended up deciding that art was the way to do that because it, sorry, I gotta, having some shaking going on. I think I need to turn my DBS system down. And that should slow me down a bit. Um, but yeah, so that's what I decided to do. And it was quite a few years before I actually got it 
going, but we did it finally this year. And we had 11 artists involved. You can go to the next slide. 11, everybody with Parkinson's. They all had Parkinson's, yes. Awesome. And they all do this with Parkinson's. So this is Henry. Um, he's an amazing painter, like just beautiful. You can see a couple of his things in the back behind him there. Really beautiful work he does. You can go to the next one. This is Doug, he's a photographer. And I'm showing you these to show you that there's all different types of creativity. You don't have to be, you know, a painter. You don't have to be Picasso or, you know, you can do just whatever you, whatever interests you. Yeah, his photography is amazing. Different things in Canada and around the world. Stunning. You can go to the next one. This is Valerie, she's a quilter. She has beautiful quilts and she has some really neat ideas in there. Next one. Michelle. She actually made this entire doll house, including all the furniture, out of just stuff from around the house, things like duct tape she made the couches with, and it's quite cool. And she does painting as well. Wow. Yeah, she does some amazing paintings. And that was a donation she gave for the uh, silent auction. So we go to the next one. Carol, unfortunately can't see her stuff too well here, but she does um, tapestry and cross-stitching. And her tremor goes away when she does cross-stitching. Really? really? Yeah. Yeah, she gets a lot of relief from that. It's quite fascinating, isn't it? It is, actually. It is. And, and you can go to the next one. And this, she does writing. This is Irene. She does writing and she, she does art. She does poetry as well as nonfiction stories just from her life. And she does her artwork. She does on Word somehow. She makes drawings, which I don't even know how she does that. And they're just awesome, amazing drawings. She, she actually published a couple of books for the show, a poetry book and a short story book. And, um, I bought them and they're really quite good. She's got some really awesome poetry in there. Hmm. So I'm enjoying reading those. We can go to the next one. No, oh, did he? Flip slides there, Peter. This is Gary, he does photography. And he was at RCMP up in Churchill, so he took a lot of pictures of polar bears and things. Yeah. Photography that he does. He also went to the Galapagos Islands and took all kinds of really awesome pictures there as well. Really beautiful photography. Next one. And this is another quilter, Caroline. She um, she has some really cool things too. She, here she had some jewelry teacup jewelry, so broken teacups and things, they make jewelry out of it, she makes jewelry out of it. Cool. Yeah, so you can, and she does photography as well, so quite a good display there. Yeah. This is Kathleen. She is was an art professor actually at the University of Manitoba. So I was kind of intimidated because I, because I didn't want her to, I said to her, you can't critique my stuff. <laughs> but she, uh, she's very nice and she does really beautiful, beautiful artwork from walking through, you know, the local forests and stuff around here. And uh, yeah, really beautiful things. She does impressive work. So the next one. This is Robert Merritt. He's a woodworker. Wow. He does all this. He turns all this on some kind of thingy. I don't know. On a wood lay. Yeah, and he just he does some amazing work. He actually has these little Scandinavian egg cups and things like that. Like the really intricate stuff, which is pretty impressive considering, you know. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And the next one. Oh, that's me. <laughs> this is my display. Um, and the piece at the back with the masks, that was my piece specifically for the show. And then I also do Ukrainian eggs. You can't really see them here, but they're really intricate as well. 
It's uh, beautiful. And I've managed to keep doing them in spite of... Are the, are the masks actual masks? You know what? They weren't because I couldn't find any that I could purchase. There was like none anywhere. So I actually used styrofoam heads, like the wig heads. Uh, okay. And we cut the faces off of them. My husband cut them off for me. It's amazing. Good job. And it was actually, the reason I did it is because we always talk about the Parkinson's mask and not being able to show emotion. And I've had trouble with people misunderstanding my facial expressions quite a bit. Like my bosses have said, oh, you have a bad attitude because they think I'm mad or right. you know, things like that. And so this was kind of a way each of those masks represents a different emotion. That's awesome. So I have close-ups of them if you're interested. In yeah. Oh. Did somebody join? I'm not sure. Peter might be able to tell. I'm not sure. Yeah, this is, you can just go to the next one. That one's. Oh, wow. They're beautiful. And you can just scroll through them quickly. I had people fill out a sheet. I didn't tell them which one was which and try to guess which one was which just by, by what was on them but you guys can just see and go to the next one this is a this is an emotion i'm i've been struggling with myself trying to make myself care about things so i had to show that one for sure this one is uh the time on there Although you can't really tell, it's two, two thirty, which was the time I was diagnosed. That was the appointment time I had, so kind of sent me into a bit of confusion after that. <laughs> so that's fear. Um, that's funny. I sit like that all the time. So do you? <laughs> Can go to the next one. Just quickly run through them. And uh, I'm not. I, I'm not going through them quickly. I'm. I'm pausing to, to enjoy them. Okay. Well, yeah. Either way, <laughs> this is happiness. Lots of flowers. <laughs> and the, the eyelashes are great. Yeah, I know. I wish I had eyelashes like that. <laughs> awesome. And that's hope. The eyes on them are amazing. Yeah, I sort of wanted to do sort of a Parkinson's stare. You know how you, because lots of times people just kind of stare at you when they have Parkinson's and you think, you know, why are they staring at me? But it's not meant to, you know, they t we tend not to blink as much. And so it looks kind of, you know, I think people sometimes mis misinterpret that. Hmm. That's kind of a nasty look. <laughs> Good. Those are really good. Oh, somebody else. They're wonderful. The, the peacocks, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And everything on these, I made every piece. So I made each of the feathers out of paper wow. or various things like the fingers on fear. I made out of um, floral foam, actually, and painted it. So I carved it out of floral foam, which was amazingly easy. Yeah. <laughs> It was lots of fun. Like I said, it took me three months and it was very worth it. It, it. it taught me a lot about myself and the disease and how I could actually change it for myself. So. They're beautiful. They're beautiful. You're very talented. I think that might be. Oh, there might be one more. Yeah. Sweet this surprise. 
This one was for my daughter because she was a sweet surprise. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Anyways, yeah. So the thing is, is I've been doing this all my life. I've always done art. So I don't want people to think that they have to be making, you know, the same kinds of things or doing the same. You can just do it on your own. You don't have to show anybody. You can write something, you can draw something, you can take pictures, whatever makes you happy and that works and whether you show people or not is up to you. One thing I was gonna, what I did with the young onset group here was we did a collage because they all said, oh I'm not creative, you know, I can't draw a stick man kind of thing. So I, I thought that if we do a collage they don't have to be great at it, you know, you just cut things out and stick them on. So you had the idea of possibly you guys doing each a collage for the next meeting and showing everybody your collage. Homework. Yeah. yeah. You can have some homework. So by by, by collage you mean I mean, I mean t t taking old magazines and cutting out pictures and images and and and, and gluing them on a pa on a page. Did any of you watch The Amazing Race? No. Canada, no one. Tim won. Yeah. He had Parkinson's and he won the first yeah. Amazing Race in Canada. He did one. He's in our group and he did one. Cool. His was all about exercise because that's how, what he cares about. It can be about anything. It doesn't have to be about Parkinson's necessarily. It can be whatever you want it to be. And you just cut it out, cut pictures out that appeal to you, and just glue them all on. Somebody, you know, somebody in our group made a butterfly. They just found colors that would work and out of magazines and cut them out. And so there's lots of different things you can do, whatever appeals to you. Okay, for next, for next month, folks. We're all going to do a collage? Yeah. That's your, that's your, yes, please. Try, try, try. Give it, a, give it a go anyway. I don't do well with scissors, but I could definitely. <laughs> you can rip it too. You don't have to. You don't have to use scissors. You can just Tear. rip it. Yeah. 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 Scissors can be dangerous with us. <laughs> <laughs> well, your artwork is beautiful and, and and very true. You hear so like Peter showed the painting that Sherry had done, and um, I mean she was never, from what I understand, an artist before and. Now she does beautiful work and, and loves it and, and says it makes you feel great. And yeah, it's amazing actually with the things like I've seen people that started sculpting once they got diagnosed and you know, writing books and it's just it's amazing. I started I started writing. I was Did never you? I was never a writer before. I write a blog and and uh, I'm shocked at the places of the world where it's being read. Um, I was just um, set up with the World Parkinson's Congress as one of their official World Parkinson's Congress bloggers. Oh, good for you. And uh, so I've kind of written about my, it's called the Broken Bodies Journey. And uh, I never thought I'd be a writer, but uh, I find it very soothing to just write and be honest and get it off my chest. I'm not a very overly private person anyway, so it never bothered me to share it. Yeah, um, I feel like that too. Yeah, I'm kind of in a small little place, mm -hmm. uh, small gossipy PEI. <laughs> <laughs> so I figured, you know, if they're going to talk about me and what I'm up to and, you know, how can she have Parkinson's if she's doing that or this or whatever, then I figure if they just read it for themselves, then there's no room for miscommunication. But I, And, and that was kind of what I started was just to get it off my chest and and uh, kind of like a journal and I didn't share it and had no intentions to and then at some point it dawned on me that maybe other people would benefit from it and I started sharing it and it, now much to my surprise it's it's quite therapeutic to write it which I wouldn't have thought. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll send everybody the link to it on the chat. For sure. Yeah definitely. So uh, I'm going to stop the slideshow. I'll stop the recording at this point as well, and then we'll have an open conversation, if that's okay. Any final thoughts, Janice, or anybody want to make a comment before I close the, the, the video recording part of it?
Oh, the images are beautiful. That's a, I think it's great what you, what you did and had everybody come together for that. That's awesome. I think more regions could do something like that. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun actually, I and mean, everybody seemed to really enjoy it. So it's very inspiring. Thank you for sharing it. You're welcome. <laughs>